Can the Dreaming Pool mess you up in the late game? Does Heimerdinger's turret repair faster with the Targon trade? And is Deadeye underperforming because of a bug? Welcome to the second round of the TFT Mythbuster series for set 9. Let's get started. I did make a video about the Dreaming Pool a while ago and I got called out pretty fast about players not receiving the units they were expecting, especially when playing Invoker. Therefore, our first myth for today is that Rise cannot appear from the Dreaming Pool. Lucky for me, this is a very easy test. All we have to do is find a random game with the Dreaming Pool region selected. Legendary unit starts appearing in stage 5-1, so let's make a leap towards the PvE round in stage 4. If we want to tailor for Rise, then we need to make sure that Invoker is our highest trade with the most units. After we finish the PvE round, we move on to stage 5-1 and now we just have to check what the portal spits out. Okay, um, apparently we didn't even receive a single unit when we have Invoker as our tailored trait. So not only is it impossible to receive a rise from the Dreaming Pool, it's even possible to not receive a unit at all. Fun fact, did you ever notice that Rise cannot appear in the carousel either? I guess currently he has a bug that makes him an invalid option for this type of mechanic. At least we have the silver lining that the Dreaming Pool only affects the Ionian Rise and nobody wants that guy anyways. Our next topic is pretty interesting. When you put Heimerding on your board, you receive a free turret. You can buy different upgrades for this turret and the one we are interested in allows the turret to repair itself over a period of time as long as Heimerdinger is alive. You can see that the turret is healing itself during the repair process. Which brings us to the following myth. Heimerdinger's turret will repair itself faster with the help of the Targon trade. Targon can increase all healing and shielding by either 20, 40 or 70%. Let's watch two fights, one without Targon and the other one with four Targon and compare the two. The turret we are using has three repair upgrades, so it should take him exactly five seconds to return to the fight. There is a visible animation with screw nuts flying around the turret when the repair process starts. We can see that the animation starts when the timer is around 26 seconds. We don't have to wait long and exactly five seconds later, the turret is able to auto attack again. This is our baseline. In our next fight, we have four Targon on the board to increase the healing by 70%. The turret goes into repair mode when the timer is around 25 seconds and is at full health 3 seconds later. Yet the turret remains in maintenance and waits out the full 5 seconds before it jumps back into action. Based on this result, the myth would be busted. But what happens if Heimerdinger dies during the repair process? In this case, the turret will stop the repair and jump back into action right away. With Targon, he could have more HP in this specific case, but the point of the strategy was to reduce use the repair time of the turret with the help of Targon, which is not the case. For our last myth, let's take a look at the Deadeye trade. This trade has a lot going on because the proc itself effectively counts as an auto attack. It will give your Deadeye units mana and it is capable of procking pretty much every effect from Sejuani's true damage to applying the Last Whisper armor pen. The myth I want to investigate is this. The Deadeye proc won't deal any damage because of Hurricane. Now the way we would expect Hurricane to work with the Deadeye proc is that because it's a bonus attack, it will proc a Hurricane Bolt to a nearby time. Target. Watching this fight, everything does seem to be working fine. We can see all the hurricane bolts flying away from Akshan. Yet something that seems to be a bit easy to miss is that the actual dead eye proc from the hurricane holder is missing. Let's create a setup to figure out exactly what is going on. Here we have a Maokai that is boxed in with a dead eye emblem and a hurricane. This way he won't deal any damage and it's very easy to spot what's happening. When the timer hits 16 seconds, Jin has currently 89 damage and Maokai has zero. The dead eye target is Jace in the middle of the last row. We see 51 damage arriving at Jace, which is coming from Jin, since it adds up to his now displayed 141 damage. Maokai on the other hand only has 25 damage displayed that went on the enemy Renekton. This can be explained by his Hurricane Bolt damage, but the damage from his Deadeye proc is nowhere to be found. At 13 seconds, the next Deadeye target is Tristana and yet again we can see two bolts flying from Maokai to the opponents with only one of them dealing 28 damage damage to the enemy Jace. Other tests revealed the same outcome. It looks like Hurricane is overwriting the attack from the Deadeye unit, which can result in a significant damage loss. If you consider that players currently love to slam items like Hurricane on Akshan because of the newly added synergy with his ability, this can result in your Deadeye trade dealing a lot less damage into the enemy backline. 
I loved going through the comments from the previous Mythbuster video. So if you have myths you want me to investigate, feel free to post them in the comments and I might get featured in a future episode. I hope you learned something and see you next time.